In this video, we are going to look at the concept of work, energy, and power in physics. Alright, so let's begin to work. Now, basically, in physics, work is defined as a product of force to the distance of a body. That means work equals force times distance. Work can also be calculated using mgh when mass and height are given as parameters and force is not given. Alright. Also note that when force is inclined at an angle theta to the horizontal, then the work done W will be, will be calculated using force times distance times cos theta, which we are theta is the angle. When the force is inclined to the an angle horizontally, whereas when the force is inclined to an angle vertically, the work will be calculated using force times distance times sine theta so take note of this difference this one is when it's inclined force is inclined to an angle horizontally where this one is when force in, is inclined to an angle vertically all right so let's solve a typical problem on this before we go to energy let's wipe this okay so let's look at this question it says a ball is pulled 20 meter long a horizontal plane with a constant force of 10 newton applied parallel to the plane in the direction of angle 60 degrees to the horizontal calculate the work done all right so we have our parameters we have our force to be 10 newton we have our distance to be 20 meter we have our theta to be 60 degree all right so to calculate the work done work done will be force times distance times cos 60 or cos theta when you substitute then you have work equals so the force is 10 times 20 times cos 60 note that we use cos because of the angle is inclined to the horizontal i didn't mean the angle was inclined to the vertical would have used sine but since it's not vertical it's horizontal we make use of cos all right so don't make the mistake of using cos when it's horizontal in place of sine when it's vertical right so don't make that unnecessary mistake so let me point this my calculator work will be cos so I have it to be 100 and work is measured in joule so to be 100 joules all right so let's wipe this and solve one more problem of work and work before you go to energy okay so this question says an object of mass 100 kg released from rest and falls through a distance of 10 meters what is the work done by the gravity all right so our parameters we have our mass to be 100 kg we have our distance that's it could be used as distance talking about height let's use height here to replace distance 10 meter and we are asked, we don't, we are asked to find work done all right so we're going to use work now will be mgh mass at acceleration due to gravity so acceleration due to gravity here is 10 right meter per second square so since the 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 object with from rest is, is falling is falling right so it fell and, and falls through a distance of 10 meters that means it was responding to gravity it will not be minus 10 meter per second square and if it was going up the object was shown up would have been against gravity this would have been a negative number all right so take note of that so we're going to have so we're going to have work done will be 100 times acceleration to gravity 10 times then we have the distance which is the height here times 10 so when we multiply through we're going to have the value to be 10,000 joules that will be the answer to this question okay so let's wipe this and look at energy all right so what is energy energy is simply the ability or capacity to do work all right so energy equals work done all right and work done is calculated using first times distance right now the difference between work and energy is that energy is a scalar quantity whereas work is a work a vector quantity now we have two major types of energy we have kinetic energy and potential energy 
All right, so kinetic energy is the energy possessed by body in motion and is calculated using half mv square, whereas potential energy is energy possessed by body at rest. All right, and, and is calculated using mgh. Now, the relationship between kinetic energy and potential energy half mv square equals to mgh so this will cancel this all right so we'll be left with v square over 2 equals gh cross multiply so we have 2gh equal v square make v the solid formula so this will cancel this therefore v velocity will be square root of 2gh and this is the relationship between kinetic energy and potential energy so take note of this expression are very important in the in this concept of energy all right so let's write this and solve some problems okay this problem says that mean the kinetic energy of a gear of mass 40 kg only with a velocity of 3 meter per second so our m is 40 kg our velocity is 3 meter per second per second all right then for kinetic energy the formula is half mv square so when you substitute when you put the values, I didn't have half mass is 40, this times 40 times 30 square. So when you simplify it, you know they have half times 40 times 30 square is 9. Or right, so when you simplify this, the more you're going to have 360 divided by 2. So this is kind of the kind of you're going to have 180. Joules. So energy, the unit of energy is joules. It's measured in joules. All right. So let's wipe this and solve another problem. Okay. So let's look at this question. It says a ball of mass 0.4 kg is drawn from a height 20 meter. Calculate its velocity at the ground. All right. So let's bring out our parameters. We have our mass to be 0.4 kg. Okay. We have our height to be 20 meter we are looking for velocity but that means we are going to use the formula for the relationship between potential energy and kinetic energy which is v equals to square root of 2 gh all right so let me show you how we derive it again potential energy is, is mgh and kinetic energies have n v square so m will count this m so we cross multiply 2gh equals v square to make v the solid formula the square both sides this will cancel this therefore v we give you this all right so now let's impute the values to be v equals square root of 2 times our acceleration to gravity will be 10 meter per second square so times 10 times our height is 20 that means we are not going to make use of this mass Right, so it's not relevant to this question since this is the formula we are working with. Right, so let's simplify for the v will be square root of 20 times 10 give us 200, 200 times 2 give us 400. So square root of 400 give us 20. Therefore, our velocity will be 20 that per second, and that'll be the answer to this question. Right, so let's wipe this and go to power. Okay, so note that power is a scalar quantity. Let me say it now before we go to power. Power is a scalar quantity. It's not a vector quantity. All right, so let's write this now and go to power. Okay, so power is basically the weight of used up energy. So energy we used up is power with respect to time. All right, so it's the weight of using up energy. That means power can be calculator using work over time all right so another way you can represent this it can also be calculated using mgh over time and also be calculated using depending depending on the parameters you have first times distance over time and it can also be calculated using first times velocity all right because this work is 
force times distance to give the work. That's why we have force times distance here over time. Work can also be calculated using MGH. Right? So you can also calculate work using MGH. Now we have a MGH here. And this force times velocity, remember this, this distance over time or displacement over time, depending on the parameter, will give you velocity. So that's why we have velocity here. Alright? So let's look at our power is measured in watts. So let's look at and some examples and solve together. Okay, a rocket. Let's look at this question. A rocket of mass forty thousand kg propelled by a force of one thousand newton acquires the speed of three thousand meter per second. Determine the power expended. That's the power used. Okay, so let's bring out the parameters. We have a mass to be forty thousand kg. We have our velocity to be three thousand meter per second. And we have our force to be. 1000 newton all right so to determine the power remember power is work over time all right and since we don't have distance given in this question or uh, we because if we break this down this this formula down it will be first times distance over time all right or mgh over time since we don't have distance or height in this expression and we don't also have time in this expression, yes, we don't have time. That means when you break this down, you can also give us force times velocity. That means this is the one we're going to work with. So power in this space will be force times velocity, which will be the force here is one thousand times three thousand. Right, so when you divide this, they're going to have the power to be one thousand times three thousand, they're going to have three million. So we're going to have 3 million watts. So this will be the answer to this question. So let's write this and solve one more problem on this before we call it a class. Okay, this question says calculate the power of a pump. We lift 500 kg of water through a vertical height of 4 meter in 5 seconds. Assuming, okay, g is 10 meter per second square. So the parameters here, we have the mass to be 500 kg. We have the time to be 5 seconds. Right, so we have the height to be four meter, and we are looking for power. Is unknown, so power will be mgh over time. So when you substitute the value, we're going to have to see the value. We're going to have it. The mass is five hundred times the acceleration into gravity. Given here is ten. All right, times height is four over the time is five. So when you break this down, we're going to have five hundred times. 10 going to give us 5,000. 5,000 times 4 will give us 20,000 over 5. So we need to divide this. We're going to have the answer to be 20,000 divided by 5 will give us 4,000 watts. Alright, so this will be the answer. So this is basically the concept behind work, energy, and power increases. And with this, we have come to the end of end of the class so let's start interesting if you are new to the channel share the subscribe button to subscribe to the channel for more videos no like share comment on this video to tell me how you figure out what i've learned if you seem to have any specific questions i feel free to be a question in the comment section below now be sure to give a response that's it for this slide guys thanks for watching